I have a, a, a loose title at the City Council in Stoke-on-Trent as the Sustainability Manager, um, looking at a variety of different issues for the council. But just to set the scene very quickly, Stoke-on-Trent, 13th largest city in the UK. It's a, it's a location that's essentially grounded in history, the history of the Industrial Revolution, the ceramics history is the most well known for our area. Um, though engineering, uh, creativity are very much at the heart of, of the city, um, and a very much a digital future for, for our city with uh, companies like Bet365 being the largest business in the city currently. Uh, though very well-known brands such as JCB, uh, as other such heavy engineering companies that still exist within the city itself. Um, the decarbonisation agenda and the dilemma is, is, is one that is, is hugely complex. Um, I, I think I've heard so many times this morning so many things that resonate with me. Uh, and so many issues that we, we're all trying to deal with and we, we come from it from a variety of different perspectives that the one that faces the UK is, is very much driven by a whole set of policy issues that have been set out for an awful long time in the UK which link back to the finding of North Sea oil the current arrangements around energy supply the ESCO models and the ownership models of energy in the UK and you know, how, how those things uh, cut across our ability and uh, capacity to do things. Um, the, the scale of the challenge for us is enormous. Um, it, it is overwhelming in, in size is, is one of the key things and I think one of the key messages in terms of communication in the round is we really need to be honest in what we say to people uh, and as a council we need to show leadership. Um, the honesty is in, in the sense that I, 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 I see a lot of things uh, that talk about how we're going to solve, solve everything through this one particular solution or other, and that's either district heating or it's going to be heat pumps, it's going to be whatever. But the, we've really got to be honest with people and, and, and try and help them understand um, the scale of the challenge that we currently face. I, I've seen a lot of chat around people not even understanding energy bills. It's, it's, a, it's, it's designed in, isn't it? That's the problem. We, we, we don't even get the chance to deal with this properly. Um, so we're kind of trying to deal with a whole set of complexities on complexities. Uh, and the only way we can deal with that and try and approach it, excuse me, I'm supposed to be somewhere else now, um, is is trying to break that down into three key things that we can concentrate on. And one is convenience and security of supply is a critical issue. And the sort of background to Stoke getting involved in this agenda in many respects was risks around energy supply in the city, certainty of price and cost. Um, that's foremost, whilst everybody wants to save the planet. Um, in, in reality, when you get into that conversation, most people always come back to price. Um, very challenging, even more challenging in today's world, and uncertainty around price given excessively high prices today, but will they be tomorrow? And carbon mitigation clearly at the heart of everything we do. And, and critically for us in the UK, uh, how do we decarbonise heat? 90% of the heat generated and used in the UK comes from the use of fossil fuels gas in particular, methane being at the heart of everything going forward. And, and the policies are very much around displacing that, that elephant in the room that was saying 45% of all primary energy in the UK is consumed currently in producing heat. The future facing approach from national policy is the use of heat pumps in particular, district heating and hydrogen boilers, which all sounds great and that's absolutely fantastic and it's, 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 it's really easy to say really hard to implement um, and really uh, quite challenging when it actually comes down to well why and how are you going to be able to do some of those things because if we actually look at energy in the UK today we we, imp we essentially consume about a petawatt hour of energy of gas energy methane in the UK today we're currently consuming a, a huge amount of electricity but generally produced still quite a lot by the use of burning fossil fuels. Um, a, a huge amount, about 800 terawatt hours of, of primary energy to deliver about 350 terawatt hours at point of use. Um, and you know, the sad reality is we still use an awful lot of gas to, to generate that, whilst we have enormous capacity these days to deliver solar and wind. Um, the, the sad reality is not always windy, it's not always sunny. Um, and you, we have to have something else to stand by and be in place. So if we're talking about a strategy that actually says, how are we going to get to a place where at some point in the future, we will have got rid of natural gas 
um, we really do have to consider and understand the implication of that when we're looking at our own strategies and approaches within the city. Um, and the really important issue for, for many things here is to, to get to any of the scenarios that we are looking at in the future of displacing that gas is we need to reduce consumption first by around 50 percent on today's consumption levels. Um, if, if we actually take a slightly more realistic view um, in terms of maintaining um, a, a solution which is actually slightly more deliverable, then we still need to take out only 40% of the consumption that exists today. So a huge amount of work in terms of changing things and pulling things through the system. And the use of hydrogen is, is generally supported by the use of natural gas, which leaves us in the same conundrum in the current world of where does that gas come from? How do we manage it and use it? And a big question about um, what is it that we're actually looking to do? Um, the, the proposition then and the issue for us is about how do I get back to a local focus? And I'm really you know, jealous that, that in Hamilton there, you've got a, a locally owned, slightly operated, locally managed energy company. The UK policy does not allow that in any way that is actually sensible at this point in time. But the reality is we can't talk about any one of those individual component parts by itself. We, we have to talk about an integrated solution. Um, the, the mentioned before about energy billing and energy supply and all the other issues is it's hard enough to get people to to understand um, the bills that they get now. If we introduce another layer of complexity in the information that people get, we can start to drive even harder conversations for ourselves in terms of where we go and how we deliver things. So really where we do have to start and where we've started is in and around energy efficiency, energy efficiency mm -hmm. and then that service and building confidence within the community, within our own community and our own organisation to get that uh, solution and those solutions designed, developed and delivered and recognising that the UK is currently power focused. Um, the price of gas versus the price of electricity is such on a different level that power still is the dominant factor within the system. And we need to sort of break that cycle by introducing sort of low carbon heating solutions but we need a long term view on how that's actually going to happen. Um, but we've got to bring it together as an integrated solution, because as soon as we are start introducing one particular solution, we clearly exclude others. Um, the, the council's been involved in a whole variety of different initiatives and opportunities to sort of change that. And, and a lot of that is in the first instance about getting that basic um, infrastructure in place. We, we have rolled out a multi gigabit full fibre network across the city, the Silicon Stoke project, which actually allows us to think about a digital future, which will, as I think was mentioned earlier, talk to us about the opportunities around digital control, smart energy systems, that ability to reduce peak loads, that ability to drive down demand, demand management um, responsiveness across the system. But getting the basics right first is, is at the heart of what we've been doing. And we're about 75% way through changing all of the lighting. So LEDs throughout our corporate estate, the whole lighting and street lighting, traffic light signs, etc. We've started on that journey of district heating, but we recognise that's a 25 year journey. It, it's a case where we are, though, providing a role in enabling. It will require substantial private sector investment for growth. We, we've, we've managed to get solar rolled out. But we're using innovative models. We're actually not actually providing the sort of funded, um, essentially subsidy driven models that we've experienced in many locations. We're actually providing for a commercially based solution where people buy the energy directly from that and consume it locally first. It's not about export. It's not about sending it back into the system. It's about reducing load on the networks. It's about reducing demand on the networks. Again, improving efficiency by reducing the scale of the requirement from the investment and infrastructure within the city to deliver that, that full arrangement. Energy efficiency measures, energy procurement, that whole approach to how we buy energy, how we manage the use of energy and getting people to understand the value and cost of that energy has been very much a part of the conversation of getting people tuned to the benefits of decarbonisation and choosing to adopt measures that actually make sense from an environmental perspective because they can actually make real sense through a commercial perspective. Working with housing, working with digital systems, uh, delivery of building energy management systems, integration of all of our public core buildings. We've started with the, the core estate at the moment. We've second phase will take us through to the wider estate but we've now got interconnectivity between all of those buildings on the building energy management systems with smart AI based solutions 
backing up those systems so we can get very smart about how we use energy, how people use energy and how people interact with those solutions. But focusing then on the behind back of those things and then about the generation and use of energy within those buildings from our own generation assets, be it solar PV on the actual buildings or through ground mount and integrating solutions um, in a pragmatic way where we are able to, to utilise air source heat pumps in an affordable sense where, for example, on sports uh, facilities using solar and uh, PV, solar PV to support the air source heat pumps, but using um, CHP engines to generate power for the wider systems and for heating of the buildings. Recognising that we've got to provide a commercially sustainable solution first in a time where money is tight. Um, exploring policy issues on heat zoning and, and the like. Um, getting ourselves to a position where we can start to exploit and utilise local systems first and try and again to create the conditions where those things are possible. Um, we are, we have an existing energy recovery facility. We're looking to generate a new one. We're trying to again focus the view and generate the commercial model and arrangements around the investment on a new facility which is very much focused on a local consumption first approach. Uh, again, trying to exploit the, the base infrastructure to do things uh, from there. Um, the, the current trajectory for the City Council on our current work and our ability to deliver for that is around 60% by 2025. With the DHN connections and work that we're doing uh, within that, we can sensibly achieve zero on our core estate by 2030. Um, we want then to be an exemplar moving out into the wider community and to the wider city and applying that in a wider sense across the area. 